So if we have to prove um, Lagrange's theorem, um, since we must take note that it is a finite group, then it is a finite group. Then H is therefore the subgroup of G. Then the order of H divides G. That's the theorem. That's definition of a Lagrange. That's Lagrange theorem. Then to prove, you let H A1 um, up to H A of K be the right coset. Of course, you know what a right coset is. Be the right coset of H and G. Now, so since we have our G to be the group, then you take the union of all the subgroup up to H of K. Then you take the order of both sides, and H one of K is a disjoint union. You know, since it is a disjoint, disjoint union, you, know, you you add. Then after adding, you separate the order. Then we have K of H. You make K the subject of the formula. Lagrange theorem is proved. Then we have some important terminologies in groups and ring. The integral domain, the normal subgroup. And we have our definitions there. So we also have some other ones like. So we have other ones like the definition of ring itself. So it is a structure that has to do deal with two equations, plus and multiplication. We have ideal ring. We have a sub ring. We have um, the zero divisor. Then we have a field. So those six, um, you should be able to differentiate uh, um, between a ring, a sub ring, the ideal of a ring, a field, integral domain, and um, the zero de device of um, of a ring. So those are the um, important terminologies we have. We have in both groups and rings. Next on the line, we have the isomorphism theorem, which is also known as the fundamental theorem of isomorphism, homomorphism. So we let N be a normal subgroup and file of A map um, the A group G to be isomorphic to G over the K over alpha. Now, initially, if we have a function F map to G, then the kernel of F we surely give us n that is if f prime of g if f is mapped to g that's um the kernel of f will be the normal subgroups now similarly for if we have g over n note that g over n is just the set of all the right cosets in g now we need to prove what we need to prove that it is well defined it is injective it is subjective and it is also an homomorphism so these four conditions must be satisfied now the first one is that um we define a mapping file such that alpha of g map to g over k of alpha by by alpha of file of alpha a map to a kernel of alpha now this same you can we can you can also see it as alpha of file of alpha b equals to b kernel of alpha you can also define it like that so if file is well defined file is well defined if and only if let's use that word if and only if alpha of a equals to alpha of b and when you take the inverse of a you are left with an identity element and going back to the definition of um of file of g map to g over kernel of alpha you see that file of a equals to a kernel of alpha so applying it down we have a inverse b kernel of alpha that's when you take the kernel of both sides so you have kernel of alpha as well so since a inverse is um, a member of kernel of alpha this simply means that when you take uh b to the other side when you take a inverse to the other side you have b kernel of alpha which is also equals to a kernel of alpha so in this case we have 
So it's actually proving that file is well defined. So the, that's the first condition we've proved. Now the next one is to prove the other conditions. Now the other condition that we have is that we let alpha a comma alpha b be a member of the uh, uh, of the group so if that should be the case from the definite from the first part they recall the definition that we gave that when you have alpha of a equals to a kernel of alpha so similarly for this alpha of a alpha of b will give us alpha of a all in a b and recalling from the definition we gave therefore this will be a b kernel of alpha and of course you you will split that to be a kernel of alpha times b kernel of alpha and it goes back to the definition of what homomorphism is homomorphism why we're dealing with homomorphism that's when you have file of a file of because of file of a file of b so that's that now if the kernel of alpha is an identity this means that um it is trivial then theta is one to one oh sorry alpha can you change that alpha is one to one that is injective or monomorphism and of course we are supposing that alpha of a is equal to alpha of b and this implies that we have a kernel of alpha which is also equals to b kernel of alpha then when you take when we take the inverse of both sides we are left with b inverse of a kernel alpha equals to kernel alpha then uh, if the b inverse moves to the other side we have our final answer to be alpha of a to be alpha of b and it simply implies that well, this is what a monomorphism now trivially speaking to prove an epimorph epimorphism that's the last part you recall that if alpha of a belongs to the group alpha of g and from the first part we know that g is mapped to g over n where n equals to the kernel of alpha so g mapped to the kernel of alpha you have a um, file of alpha a which is equals to what a kernel of alpha and that's what we've been using since the beginning of what of the theorem so this is everything about the first fundamental theorem of homomorphism which is also known as the isomorphic um, theorem of homomorphism thank you